First question is from Nick Hibino. How often should I switch up my lifting exercise for max gains? Oh, this is actually a really good question because there's like a bell curve with this, mm. right? So if you switch too soon, then what happens is you you lose the ability to get good at an exercise and really reap its benefits. And there's a, a different learning curve for each exercise, like barbell curls. You start to master them very quickly. A barbell squat, much longer. And through that mastery process, once you get to a point where you can really push weight and have good stability, then you really see a lot of gains. And that can take a while. So you'll want to stick to that exercise for a while. But if you do an exercise too long without switching things up, risk of injury goes up, plateaus can start to happen. Um, so it's, it's kind of different from exercise to exercise and program to program. So it's a hard it's a hard one to answer. Well, do you guys have some some general cuz that's a great point, right? So what you'll see when I'm doing my own programming, right? If I'm not following something specifically, I I will keep things like the, you know, barbell back squat or standard, you know, barbell overhead press and deadlift uh, in my routine for sometimes months right. before I phase it out or transition them. And normally what I do is I just interrupt it with some like you know, multi-planar you know, lunges mm -hmm. or split Cossack stance, squats yeah. or Bulgarian split squats. And then I'll be right back at it just to make sure that I'm kind of addressing everything. But I'll I'll keep a, a movement like that in my, my programming for months with just, like I said, a little yeah. bit of intermittent. Now, if I was just doing, you know, easy curl, bicep curls, shit, I ain't doing that more than maybe four workouts in a row. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Four workouts in a row and I'm I'm out of it. I'm already transitioning into something different. Yeah, I think those higher skill ones, like they're always gonna make it in the rotation. The only thing that's gonna change a lot is either the tempo, the intensity, oh, you know, the point. rep count, like yeah. you know, those variables that you can adjust but still get some of those same benefits, but now you're getting a new stimulus that your body's reacting to. So I still like to keep them around, but yes, I do incorporate other exercises to kind of fill the needs, especially if, if I'm just training a lot, like uh, to the beginning of this podcast, talking about just training in, in one direction too much. You know, I want to make sure I'm considering a lot of other variables that yeah. will benefit my body. That's a great point. Um, very, very good point because you can, so the complex exercises, the gross motor movements ones, are the ones that you can keep in for a long time. Just because there's so much you can gain from them, there's so much that's involved. Um, you know, you could squat for a whole year and get phenomenal gains out of a squat, um, so long as you do auxiliary movements and some other exercises to address imbalances. But then simple exercises, you adapt very quickly and you benefit more from variety, right? So. One rule of thumb, or I don't even say a rule of thumb, but one thing to consider is with the complex, really valuable exercises, you can just modify the exercise itself, and now you've got a little bit of variety. For example, I may do traditional barbell squats for a while, and then notice I'm starting to plateau and say, okay, rather than not doing back squats, what I'll do now is I'll do a pause squat mm -hmm. or a box squat or... I'll change the tempo or like a you wide said. stance, wide stance. Yes, narrow, narrow stance, stance. Exactly. or heels elevated. Like there's a lot of stuff that you can play within the, those movements. I will say this though, if I'm training a client and we have been doing a lot of those movements consistently and we've, let's say we're in a hard plateau, I may interrupt the program and completely change all the exercises just to try and break a plateau because I mm. find that if they've been training consistently with me, we've been doing some of these movements yeah. and and I've maybe I've manipulated some other things in the routine and I'm not I'm not I'm not breaking through the plateau fast enough, then I may introduce a whole bunch of new movements completely that that way I know I'm going to get that. Let's give the audience some takeaways, okay? So, let's be more specific. What are some of your favorite I guess interrupter movements or exercises for some of the biggest compound. Well, I just lifts. I just named mine, right? Bulgarian split squats, so for squats. or multi plane lun multi planar lunges, or um, like uh, Cossack squats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, those... I agree with you. I like the the single the like the unilateral stuff mm -hmm. for barbell squats. Yeah, front squats sometimes too. I'll yeah. do front squats instead of back squats. Uh, for deadlifts, sometimes I'll do trap bar or sumo instead of conventional. Or a high pull, much more complex, but I notice a high pull's got some good carryover from a deadlift. Bench press, that's as easy as going incline, in my opinion, or using dumbbells, in my opinion. And then overhead press, I'll go from barbell to behind the neck barbell to dumbbell uh, press or to an Arnold press or even a, a like Z I saw you doing today, 
uh, bottoms up press. Yeah, bottoms kettlebell. up press. Yeah, I like to do stuff like that to really address like stability issues. If I feel like I'm plateauing or coming close to it, I like to challenge instability. I like to challenge, you know, rotational movements and always constantly looking at that, especially pressing mm -hmm. because your your shoulder is so complex in its uh, abilities uh, to to move. And so to be able to take it through full range of motion and then mm -hmm. challenge it along those ranges of motion is very crucial for me, you know, squatting, you could just place the bar in a different loading position. I like, you know, Zercher squats for that, yeah. uh, which, you know, are great. It's totally challenges you in a different way. And so you just got to think, you know, other, other uh, instances that you'll get, you know, good benefit from it as well, but a totally different stimulus. And that interruption looks like, what did you guys say, two to four weeks now you have that, you're doing that new movement in replace of it, and then you bring it back? Is yeah, that, I'll do ex I'll exactly. at least like three weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly like that. So like four. Although yeah. I did do unilateral for about three months, but my my circumstance was different. I was noticing. Well, yeah, there's exceptions to the rule. Pain. Where you I was getting pain, you know, and it, and it was going away. And I and then I noticed a huge, here's a, here's a good thing to keep in mind. When you change to a new movement, uh, that's especially from like a bilateral to unilateral, and you notice a huge discrepancy between the two sides, probably sticking there a little longer. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree with that. And I want to add the the single leg deadlift to your, your oh, good alternatives one. for deadlifting. That's one of my favorite. When I'm going to stop barbell deadlifting for a while, is to go into the single leg deadlift uh, with dumbbells mm -hmm. for a while before I go back. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.